This is the first video for section 2.1 for Math 161 Precalculus. In this video, we will look at properties of parabola. So I gave you a, a, a quadratic function in this form. Okay, I have y equals x plus 3 is getting squared minus 4. We just looked at transformation of functions. So um, we know how this parabola will look. Um, shifted let me go ahead and start writing shifted down four units right because of that subtracting four we also know that this parabola will be shifted left three units from the origin right so if if a function is written in this form and um I don't know, some will call it all different forms. So um, I'm not going to call it a specific form, but if you have a parabola in this form, y equals a times x minus the plus a value getting squared plus k, this is the form that we worked with, right? Um, and this is what we use to do transformation of functions. But if it isn't, that form is very easy to read the vertex. So that's maybe why some books call this vertex form. Why is this called vertex form? Because vertex, if you have um, the quadratic in this form, is simply going to be h for the x-coordinate and k for the y-coordinate. So if the equation is in this form, we have a vertex at h, k. This is the vertex. And you already know why, because look, um, this parabola will be shifted 4. So I'll go down 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I need to go left 3, 1, 2, 3. So I have a parabola right, uh, I'm sorry, the vertex right there. That's what we're going to have the... The lowest point um, based on the transformation but vertex here because they're already asking for it down here on part b if we give them the coordinate of the vertex that will be negative three notice this negative three is the opposite of what you see in the parentheses because if you see x plus three um that means we went left three that's why the x coordinate is negative three our y coordinate well we down went, went down four so the y coordinate is negative 4. Um, will this graph open up or open down? Um, again, going back to the transformation last week, notice that we do not have a negative leading coefficient, right? So a is positive 1, right? It's not written, but a is positive 1. Because it's a positive number, this parabola will open upward. If we have a negative leading coefficient, for example, if you have y equals negative x plus 3 squared minus 4, if you have that negative in front, the parabola will be reflected across the x-axis, therefore opening uh, downward. But this one, a was positive, so it will open upward. It says, find, and this may be new, this is new, find the equation of the axis of symmetry. Now pay attention, they want the equation, okay? They want an equal sign. They want something on the left of the equal sign and something on the right of the equal sign. And this is how you tell the axis of symmetry. I always kind of talk about this. When you spell axis of symmetry, do you see this part? It says x, x is, right? So the axis of symmetry is an equation that says x equals, I like that, right? Um, remember when you sketch a parabola, when you guys sketch a parabola, it is symmetric um, about its own axis of symmetry. It's a U-shape. So if you sketch a U-shape, we have that middle line. Okay, That's what they're asking. That is the axis of symmetry. And that axis of symmetry will always go through the vertex. So as soon as you plot your vertex, what I suggest you do, is you um, sketch a dotted line straight through that vertex. Now, that straight line, that vertical line, is not part of the function. 
but this is a line of symmetry that our parabola will be symmetric about. So, um, what is the equation for this vertical line? Notice all the points on this um, line will have an x coordinate of negative 3. So, the axis of symmetry equation is x equals negative 3. Okay, and this is always the x coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so anytime you have to find the axis of symmetry equation, remember, it's always going to be the x coordinate of the vertex. So the answer is x equals negative 3. Let me just move this in the blank. x equals negative 3. Alrighty, down here, does the function have a minimum or maximum value? Let's talk about this one. Um, we know that this graph, this parabola, uh, opens upward. Right? So sketch it. Sketch a U shape that opens upward. A U shape that opens upward. It has the lowest point. Right? In the bottom of the U shape, we have a lowest point. So it has, um, I'll just call it, it has a minimum. Right here. So the answer is minimum. So if a parabola opens upward, we have the lowest point and the rest of the graph is just going up. If a parabola opens downward like this, then you're going to tell them that that graph has a maximum. Okay? So when I ask, when I have a question like this, I always try to graph it to see. Um, and, you know, I guess we can say, we can make up a rule. We can, can make up a rule. Maybe like down here. If A is positive, F has minimum right because positive a value means graph of opens up the picture looks like that and we can say if a is negative value then f has maximum because it's going to open downward and we're going to have the highest point so if we can you know make up a rule like that we can use that but I tend to always go back and kind of sketch it to see, okay? All right, where does the minimum or maximum value occur? Um, we know it's a minimum value, so I'll go ahead and cross out the word maximum. Where does the minimum value occur? So what they are asking is, what is the lowest point of this graph? We know that the lowest point will be the this vertex okay and how low is that going to be you see I can sketch this but if I just do a quick sketch of it something like this do you agree that the lowest point of this graph is negative 4 right so I'm gonna go ahead and tell them that the lowest point or the minimum is negative 4 oh no I have to be careful all right I almost made a mistake look where the star minimum value occur so they want where they want the location of it so we have to give them the x coordinate so this good question that i wrote down is actually going to be for the second part this part right there but if they're asking for where does the minimum value occur they want the x coordinate Of vertex okay oh I'm so, I'm so glad because I typed up x equals blink right here okay so that's how I was able to avoid that mistake okay so uh, what is the x coordinate of the vertex oh again that is negative 3 and the next part is asking what is the functions minimum value when they're actually asking for that value that's when they want the um, y coordinate how low does this go 
it goes as low as negative 4. Do, do, do. So you tell them the minimum value is negative 4. Oh, I wrote so small. I think this page looks so busy, but I hope you guys are okay with this. All right, almost done. Let's do the finding domain and range part. Now, domain of a quadratic function is always all real. Four quadratic. Why? Because you can square any number if you want. There's no restriction on what type of special numbers you get to square. You can square any number. So because of that, the domain of any quadratic function is always going to be all real numbers. Okay? How about range? Now remember, we're going to have a... And for range, you know, I always kind of come back after graphing it. So I'll go ahead and graph this function. And um, we practice graphing by plotting x and y uh, using x and y tables. So you know how to graph this. But if I were to uh, graph this using some special points on this parabola, I will find some um, these things, the y-intercept and the x-intercept. Um, I'll talk about how to find these algebraically, okay? Y-intercept happens when x value is equal to 0, okay? Because to be on the y-axis, to be on the y-axis, it should not go to the right or go to the left. It should all be on this y-axis, right? That's why we say the x-coordinate will be equal to 0. So what was the function? Um, let me go copy down the function. The function was y equals this. Let me copy this down there. What I will do is I will plug in 0 into x. That's how you find the y-intercept algebraically. So y equals 0 plus 3 squared minus 4. y equals 3 squared minus 4. y equals 9 minus 4. Ooh, that means y is 5. So I will plot a y-intercept of 0, 5. The x-coordinate is 0, so that it can be on the y-axis. And that's the number that we plugged in, right? We said x is 0, and the y came out to be 5. So let me go plot that real quick, okay? Take a look. Over here, I'll plot 0, 5. So the point will be up here. Now I'm going to show you how I use the line of symmetry to plot another point. Now notice that this point that I just plotted is 1, 2, 3 to the right from that axis of symmetry, right? So go the same number of units to the left from this line of symmetry. So from the line of symmetry, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3 to the left. And I know that we will have a point right there. This is graphing another point, plotting another point, using that idea of symmetry. Okay. If I have a point 3 to the right from the axis of symmetry, I better have the, another point 3 to the left from that axis of symmetry. Okay. So by plotting one point using the symmetry, I found out another point. All right, let's go find the x-intercepts. Now, just like um, y happens when x is 0, y-intercept happens when x is 0, um, x-intercept happens when y is equal to 0. So I'll say, if you want to find this algebraically, set y equals 0. So this time, I'm going to say 0 equals x plus 3 squared minus 4. And I'll solve this algebraically, okay? So take a look. I will add 4 to both sides. Plus 4, plus 4. I'm trying to solve for x. A lot of people FOIL, but that will actually get you a, a quadratic that you are going to have to uh, factor. So um, if you have x inside this parenthesis, what I will do is I will add 4 first, okay, to get 4 equals x plus 3 q squared. And let's get rid of squaring, okay? What is opposite of squaring? You can square root both sides, right? So this is where I'm going to say I will square root left side, square root right side, so that squaring and square rooting will cancel each out. But here's the thing, though. Whenever you take square root or even root of both sides, you need to put plus or minus sign um, on the left side. On the, oh, I shouldn't say left side. On, on both sides, really. But um, 
is putting a plus or minus sign in front of this square root of 4 will be enough, okay? So look, what's the left side? That's square root of 2. And that's a square root of 4. It's just 2, right? So that's why I have, I have plus or minus 2. The right side, it will just come out. x plus 3. Now, we technically have two different equations, okay? So this is where I can um, separate them, okay? I can say the first equation is saying 2 equals x plus 3. But I have another equation that I can have as minus 2 or negative 2 equals x plus 3. And I'm going to have two answers, two x-intercepts. If I subtract 3 from both sides, minus 3, minus 3, the first x-intercept that I get is negative 1. Okay? I will plot negative 1, 0 as my first x-intercept. Let's solve the other one. Subtract 3, subtract 3. What do we get? The second x-intercept comes out to be negative 5. So I will plot negative 5, 0. Let's plot them and check them visually, okay? Because these two points um, should fit the pattern of the graph. So um, let me go plot negative 1 and negative 5. Negative 1 is right here. And negative 5 is right there. I'm not liking this. Take a look. Because negative 1 is 2 to the right from the axis of symmetry. Negative 5 is 2 to the left from the axis of symmetry. So these two points that I just plotted, they fit the pattern. Yay. Okay. So I have five points. I'm going to go ahead and connect them to graph. Notice that I did not use a graphing calculator at all, right? We don't need it. We know how to graph a parabola. What graphing calculator does is it makes our job a little bit easier, right? Let's check if our graph is correct. But I want you to be able to do this entire page, graph everything without a graphing calculator because you can, right? Now I'm going to go back and talk about the range. Range is about how low this graph goes and how high up does this graph go. Notice that the lowest point of this graph is negative 4. So when I write the range of a quadratic function, this quadratic function, I'll have square root, a square bracket negative 4. Why am I using a square bracket? Because we have a point at negative 4. We don't have an open circle here. We have a graph that is touching this very low point whose y-coordinate is negative point, negative 4. Now, how high up does it go? It looks like this graph is going up forever. So, I think the range is the difficult part. Because um, domain is always going to be all real. Range is um, going to be different. If a graph opens up, you're going to have the lowest point going up to the highest point. But if the graph opens down, you're going to have negative infinity in the first position and the highest point um, in the second position. We'll look at another example, but this concludes the very first page. Okay, so um, this week in Alex, um, you see how I did everything in a single example, right? Um, your Alex topics will be divided, okay? So one topic will just ask you to do the range. One topic will just ask you to do the vertex. Um, so that way you can practice um, each of these skills. Because, you know, it's, I did a big summary. But I want you to be able to practice um, all of these, like at least three times on your homework this week. Okay? I'm going to stop this video here. And I will come back and talk about how to graph an um, equation in this format. Ax plus bx plus c in another video.